Hello and welcome to the Analog Toys live stream. I've got a very special show set up for you. I say special show. It's not that special, but um, I spent a long time last night figuring out a new way to set some things up here, here in the studio. So um, I've got a few things to discuss before we sort of get into, into the main topic. But just to give you a bit of a sneak peek, um, I've got a special uh, camera here set up so I can show you some some toys in some real um, high definition video quality. So uh, we're going to be going through a lot of stuff a bit later on. But first of all, um, let's say hello to everybody in the chat. We've got Ken from Toy Connections. We've got Goja Trad. Uh, Goja Trad? Goja Tron? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, Greg Fenstad, Michael Schaefer, as always. Michael Schaefer is actually uh, in the back helping me out. Um, Scuba Pete, Jason Anderson, Wealth by Lunchtime, Timothy Ward, Ted Millich, um, a whole bunch of people. Where's Keith Knight? I bet you Keith Knight didn't even get the notification for this because he's um, computer illiterate. Um, Goja Trad is Goja Chad. <laughs> Articulated Chad just got here. Well, that's good, mate, because I've only been going for um, the 60 seconds. Why? Is my camera doing that? Um, that's not a good sign. My second camera just turned itself off, but uh, we can figure that out. Um, yes, John Sinsman, this will be a fun one. Um, Articulated Chad, thank you very much for... Um, Articulated Chad sent me a wristband and it says, three miles up, three miles down, Kurahi. Um, I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, for anyone who's... A fan of Band of Brothers, you'll know what that all means. So, uh, Wes Robinson, good to see you too. All right, we're here tonight to talk about um, vehicles that I think that Hasbro could release for the G.I. Joe Classified line uh, in the six-inch scale, but vehicles that they could do at retail. Before we get into that subject, I want to talk about the vehicle that they're doing um, as part of HasLab. So... Let's pull up some really nice imagery here of the Haslab His Tank. $299. Um, now, everybody knows I am not an enormous fan of the, the crowdfunding model um, from, from Hasbro. I don't have any issue with crowdfunding models when it is an independent company. Um, but trying to trying to get their foot in the door, trying to get um, trying to get their way into the market. It's you know, um, competition breeds progress. Um, the more companies that are out there producing quality action figures, the better each company needs to be to be able to compete um, with the other manufacturers in the market. So, you know, Valiverse is obviously a, a, a great example. Uh, and I, I do really appreciate the fact that Bobby did a, a, a Kickstarter for Series 1 and hasn't done a Kickstarter since. But, um, yes, Jeff McElway, Fortune 500 companies shouldn't be doing crowdfunding. Absolutely agree with you. So while it's not certainly not something that I want to support, um, I'm very pleased for the G.I. Joe fans out there who do like this and who did back it because this is how, if you are going to do a crowdfunding campaign, this is how you do it. This ended up being a really, really good deal. What is there? Four different figures with this. We've got the driver, um, the tactician, Cobra commander, and then there was a female figure as well. Um, this is the way to do it. Like the, Has uh, the uh, Hasbro Star Wars team could learn a hell of a lot from the G.I. Joe team on how to run a HasLab. This was incredibly successful. Um, this sells for $299 US, and it needed... 8,000 backers, and it was backed within the first few days. Um, the campaign ended not too long ago. Um, I want to say like a, like a week ago, and it had close to 27,000 backers. I think it was 26,772, if I'm correct. Let me have a quick look here. I did pull it up before. Yep, 26,772 backers. That's incredible when they had a, a, a goal of 8,000. Um, that also equates to over, just over $8 million. 
That's eight million dollars that Hasbro is sitting in a high interest account um, for more than the next twelve months. Now, me personally, I I don't pre-order a lot of stuff anyway. Um, I mean, you can't pre-order vintage. I'm I'm really trying to get back into collecting vintage toys and not too much more. You know, the only modern I'm really collecting is is Valiverse Action Force. Um, I don't pre-order a lot of stuff. And if I'm going to shell out $300, I want that item shipped to me within one to two weeks. Um, I don't want to have to wait over 12 months um, for the item to arrive. Jason Anderson. More like sitting in an executive's high interest yacht. Yes, pretty much. Um, Wealth by Lunchtime says, it's like my boss asking me to crowdfund his new Porsche. Yeah, kind of like that, I suppose. Um, but look, all, all, all of that aside, I don't want to get into that, that, that whole debate. I've discussed it at length in many podcasts and other videos. Um, let's just take a look at the, um, the his tank itself. These shots that showed up, um, about a week or two ago, these really good, um, photographic images, you can see here. This is something I always wanted in the His Tank when I was a child. Um, I've got a. Now this is the um, this is the uh, the retro collection His Tank. George uh, George Aitken sent me this. Thanks, George. Um, very very nice. When I was a child, I always wanted a His Tank where you can actually open up the back and get people to sit in, treat it a bit like a um, an armored personnel carrier. I love the look of the turret in there. In in the red, you can see there's a weapons rack at the back for holding a rifle. I'm not sure how many troopers actually fit in here. Um, here we've got a good shot of the um, the his tank driver. I, I I mentioned in a podcast uh, on a, on the three POA when we were talking about this. <coughs> Where well, he said, when it funds, you know, would they throw in a nice little um, bonus feature? And I was like, oh, they should they should give it a ladder. That would be really cool. Of course, <clears throat> I didn't know it actually came with a with a fold down ladder. Um, I believe that ladder folds back up into the side of the, of the vehicle. Um, but looking very cool there. It's got the rocket attachments, which is one of the um, one of the unlocks. Um, a really nice photo of this. Um, this vehicle at night time there. So we, we see here, you've got one trooper sitting in the back and one running out as though he's just been in the back. I'm not sure you can actually get two figures in there. Um, why a, a display collector would want to anyway, I don't know because you're buying a figure and once you stick him in there, you're not going to be able to see him anyway. So, um, but uh, another really cool shot. Um, I've got a thing for, Armoured infantry, light infantry deploying from the back of armoured vehicles. It looks really, really cool. Um, some details in the cockpit. Looks very nice. Now, with the light and sound features, or I don't even actually know if it's got sound features. With the light features, <coughs> excuse me, I really wish... Um, that all the toy companies who are doing this kind of thing would follow suit of Playmobil, who is, um, rather than putting batteries in and, you know, then you've got the risk of the acid leaking and corroding the battery terminals and you constantly got to replace them. Playmobil um, actually have a USB port to recharge it with a lithium battery. Um, for someone who wants to display this in their collection, to be able to plug a USB cable into this and have it turn on when you turn on your cabinet lights, that would be something really, really cool. But they don't do it. They don't do it with their um, with their life-size like Marvel Legends helmets and things like that either. I really wish they would. Imagine getting a, an Iron Man helmet that you could put in a display cabinet and have it permanently plugged into a power source. Um, very, very cool. I really like this image. This this image here is of, you know, a Cobra squad basically arming up and doing a bit of maintenance on the His tank before 
riding it into battle again. It looks fantastic. It's a great shot. Um, that machine gun on the top there. Whoops. Done it again. Oh, so it's like a minigun. Yeah, that's um that's a cool looking machine gun there. So who in the chat has purchased this item? I'm I'm interested to know. Um Michael Schaefer says they did a great job of the images selling it. Nothing like the Rancor. Absolutely. I mean the Rancor's unlocks were a cardboard backdrop was one of them, a bag of bones. Yeah. The Canuck says your USB charger would be awesome. Wonder if Alaverse has this planned at all. Um, I don't know if Alaverse is doing um lights. Like I personally I, I would just just do away with the lights. But if you are gonna put them in, what I'm saying is don't have them run off like double A batteries, have them run off a USB charger. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my son's really sick at the moment. I think I might be picking up a bug from him. Um, Bobby L. Collins, the light is stupid. Are they trying to summon Cobra Man? <laughs> yeah, um, Bobby L. Collins. Right, I, I look at this image here, and I'm trying to understand what is the tactical purpose of it. Um, it shoots directly down at the ground, not out in front. I'm always reminded of that scene in Band of Brothers where they're in Holland, where one of the American airborne soldiers jumps up to the turret of a British tank and tells him to put a shell right through that building because there's a, a German Tiger tank behind it. And he says, oh, no unnecessary destruction of property. You know, if I can't see the bugger, I can't shoot him. Um, well, it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be an issue here because it you would you would see the cobra light hanging out the hanging out the front of the building and uh and then he would know exactly where he was so Jason Anderson says the tactical purpose is to help the driver not drive through puddles puddles being the cobra clown <laughs> that's a really good name for the cobra clown puddles yeah um so Jeff72 says, no, a bit too rich for me. I, I, I don't, now that it's got the four figures with it, this is not a, this is not an overpriced item. Not, um, would I pay 300 for it? Probably not. Um, <laughs> Bobby or Collins, for $300, this tank better have ratcheted knees. Um, I really think, I was very, very surprised that the, the Hasbro G.I. Joe team decided as their first vehicle to come out with <clears throat> a Cobra vehicle and not a Joe vehicle. Um, that really surprised me. I, I thought it would have been a hero vehicle straight out of the gate, but there we go. Uh GZUS32 says, I think the Hiss looks great, but but I buy Joe's and Action Force for my son, and I can't justify $300 for a seven-year-old's toy. Uh, no, I don't blame you. Um, the most I've done was around $100 for a uh, Black Series Snow Speeder. Is that what the Black Series Snow Speeder cost? That was like 200 bucks here in Australia. And I know, obviously, there is um, an, a, a difference in the exchange rate, but... $100 US does not equate to $200 Australian. But in Australia, we get ripped off for our action figures. I just, I, I, I know I just said before that I don't pre order a lot of stuff. One item I did pre order is the Marvel Legends um, Amazing Fantasy Spider Man um, from Amazing Fantasy 15. I, um, I don't have a classic looking Spider Man in my collection. That's the one I want. You know, I want a comic accurate one and to go back to his, his first appearance. That was ideal. I pre-ordered that, and the company I pre-ordered it from here in Australia, um, they had it. Um, it's, it's one of those companies where I think I only paid like a ten dollar deposit, and then the rest comes out later. And that ended up being seventy five dollars Australian, an absolute rip. It might be the last Marvel Legend I ever buy. Um, it's absolutely getting ridiculous. Uh, Jeff Barker, good to see you, mate. He says I hate that they used. The flying snake logo from the Moray on the Hiss tank. Learn your Joe history. 
Did they do that? I hadn't even noticed. Where do we see a good image of this? Where is that logo? I'm not doubting you um, at all, Jeff. I just want to see the logo. Oh, on the packaging. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, that's... Um, well, I mean, the the people running the G.I. Joe team don't know G.I. Joe. Um, as Bobby Vallis told us many times, Hasbro has an issue with... Um, when you're a fan of a property, you can't work on that property, which is just a, a really stupid way of thinking, I think. Um, Daniel Dorian says, Tony, I see Action Man will be 56 this year. Yep, and someone who is 55 this year is Captain Scarlet. And for those of you on my Patreon have already seen my Captain Scarlet video, for those of you who aren't on Patreon... Uh, first of all, I, I recommend that you support the channel on Patreon. There's lots of extra content there, early access to videos. Um, but for the rest of you who aren't on Patreon, my Captain Scarlet video drops at 8 p.m. tonight, which is about an hour and three quarters away. Um, Power Track says, I rarely get mass retail figures anymore except DC Multiverse and some wrestlers. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a wrestling guy, but more power to you if that's your thing. Thank you very much, Ken. I appreciate that. Ken from Toy Connection says, the Patreon extra videos are worth the Patreon pledge. Uh, much appreciated. And Keith Knight says, the Captain Scarlet video is superb. Thanks, Keith. Were you late to this party, mate? Um, I was saying hello to everyone at the chat when it started and you weren't here. Normally, normally you have your towel out on your sun lounger and you're all, you're all ready to go. So Now, when it comes to vehicles that I believe that Hasbro could sell at retail, obviously we've had the Ram cycle. That was a perfect choice. Um, six inch scale, all different brands have had a lot of motorcycles. I mean, you, it, it's difficult to count the amount of motorcycles we've had in Marvel legends. Um, then we also had that Cobra coil. I think it was called from Baroness. No interest in that. Absolutely no interest at all. Um, but where do we go from here? Um, well, Jeff McElway says, I know it wasn't your intention, but all I could think or to do was, but all I could, but all I could do was think Team America when I watched the Scarlet video. Um, well, Team America <clears throat> is a, is a spoof of those very popular puppet shows. Um, you know, for for those of us who grew up with those shows, how do I how do I put this? Um, your 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 comment says to me that you watched Team America before you knew anything about the Jerry Anderson TV productions of the nineteen sixties and seventies and and even into the eighties. Um, Evander from Paris, he says I'm biased, but I love the Captain Scarlet video. Thank you again, Evander. Thank you very much. Um. All right, uh, before, before I get into the first vehicle that I think that the Hasbro team should do at retail, I want to address this because I've heard that the Hasbro G.I. Joe classified team are bringing out the Trouble Bubble, the Cobra Pogo. They're two vehicles that I just I don't want. I have no interest in. I don't know why they're doing the Trouble Bubble. Um, perhaps I'm just biased, but it's a vehicle I, I didn't have as a kid because I didn't want it as a kid because I think it's dumb. I really think it's dumb. Um, I do not want... Uh, I don't want to see the trouble bubble in the G.I. Joe classified line. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it, whatever. Um, what I do want to see is this. I want to see the Cobra Night Landing. Um, I would also like to see... Where's my mouse gone? There. I would also like to see Valiverse do something like this. The, I'm actually going to do a test later on 
Action Man had an uh, Action Man used to have really small inflatable dinghies, but then they had blow molded hard plastic ones. And I've got the black SAS dinghy, but it's actually a little bit undersized for Action Man. I'm wondering what it would look like being a black dinghy with a squad of like nine op steel brigades in it. I probably should have prepped that for this stream. But anyway, what, what I will do is um, I'm going to I'm going to set that up afterwards and take a photo and share it on Patreon and, and, and see what you think. This, I think, would be an excellent, excellent idea for an item to sell at retail. Some cool accessories, a really cool vehicle, displays very well on a shelf. It's not very tall. Um, and I believe you could almost sell it in a box about that big. Obviously, you know, without a figure, of course, you could put uh, the, the inflatable dinghy, put the craft in there with the accessories on either side um, in a box around that size, sell that at retail all day long, 35 bucks. Um, that would be terrific. Um, yes, Michael Schaefer, not too expensive to produce either. Um, yeah, I think that would be a good move as well, Keith. Uh, William Curry says, I wonder how a modern version of the whale would be like. It's something that they'll never do. Um, there are not enough collectors in the world who have the kind of real estate in their display area to put a six-inch scaled whale. We'll never, ever see that. Um, we need to think a lot smaller. So I've been very... Um, I've been very selective when it comes to... Um, picking the type of vehicles that I would like to see the Hasbro line do at retail. So <clears throat> um, I showed a photo of this because I don't have the actual toy yet. I've been thinking about that. I mentioned this on a 3POA to Bobby. Um, I've been thinking about this particular toy a lot and I went out and purchased one. It just unfortunately hasn't arrived in time. So I used a photo. Um, so what I am going to do now is switch over to the second camera. And here we have, Zartan and the Swamp Skier. Now, for me, the Zartan action figure is really where the G.I. Joe classified line started to course correct in the right direction. This is a great figure. It was one of my favorite figures of last year. Was it last year or late the year before? Um, it's a terrific figure. And I've seen a number of uh, astute 3D printers out there Um 3D printing artists um, who have created the Swamp Skier um, for, for Zartan. I think this is something that Hasbro should do. I think they should bring it. When they did, they did a deluxe sand, it was, I don't know if it was a Comic-Con or whatever. It was. They did a deluxe version of, of Zartan who had the color changing ability, um, alternate heads, alternate weapons. I would have much rather have seen Zartan and his famous Swamp Skier. Um, a small, simple toy, and again, another item that you could sell at retail. If you packed it in with Zartan, call it 50 bucks, you know, 25 for the figure, 25 for the vehicle, 45 bucks maybe. Um, that would be a great, great item um, for Hasbro to sell at retail. I do like that Zartan figure. Um George Aitken says, I honestly think they should release the dinghy with an eel and a separate one. Um, if they did, George, I would probably buy six of them. Um, Cobra Eel being my favorite Cobra Trooper. Jason Anderson says, combine the Cobra Bunker and the shooting range. I have the Cobra Bunker and I recently acquired the shooting range from Reclaimers Vintage Toys. Um, great little combo. I mean, that would look, <coughs> that would look awesome on a... Uh, on a display shelf with some some Cobra Troopers, some Crimson Guards. Uh, that would look very, very cool. Jim Largo, thank you very much for the kind super chat. He says, hello, Tony. Captain Scarlet video is excellent. If Mattel can make Motu and Lightyear vehicles at reasonable retail prices and availability, why can't Hasbro give us a classified scale vamp? They can, they just won't. The, the vamp is in that tricky position, I feel, where it is 
getting big enough where Hasbro are reluctant to to make it um, because of the you know the the price point. It would probably be around, I want to say about one hundred and fifty bucks. Um, if if the snow speeder was a hundred, maybe a hundred and thirty, something like that. They see that as a bit of a risk, um, but then it's not big enough to make into a Haslab. Um, I did suggest before they did the Hiss tank that they should do the vamp towing the Howl laser cannon because uh, that was a, I think it was a Sears store exclusive where the two were sold together. So having those two vehicles and making it into one kind of big Haslab gives a lot a collector a lot of display options, you know, depending on the size of your shelves and your cases, whatever they are. Um, you can have the vamp at one end and the howl laser at the other. Um, you also, when you put your figures inside, you can see them really easily. And obviously, the 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 um, the gunner of the howl laser just sits in a, in an open chair. Um, I think about these things, you know. <laughs> um, Ted Scuba Pete says, "Ted, that would be a good one." What did Ted suggest? Um. Oh, the Manta, Manta. Um. Yeah, I think they're more likely to do the Ore Striker um, than the Vamp. Um, think it slightly less tooling because of the uh, design of that roll cage. You know, if they made that removable. I'm thinking of how they're going to pack it, you know, put it into a, a box for packaging. Um, the ore striker, I think, with a few clipped together parts, could come in a much flatter box. Um, toy designers think about this kind of thing, and toy companies. So, um, but yes, yeah, so I, I would have liked to have seen um, the swamp skier for, for Zartan. I may even one day go out and pick up one of these 3D printed ones that people are making. Um, I recently acquired the Cobra Claw from Mark II Designs. Hasn't arrived yet, but he's he's sending me one. Um, I'll definitely show you guys photos of that. I want to display it on my Storm Shadow figure. Um, Greg Fenstad says, Halo Warthog, Monster Truck Batman, and RC Batman have been done under $100 US. So a vamp is realistic, in my opinion. Uh, I, I think it's realistic, and you think it's realistic, uh, and, and I agree with you. What I'm saying, I, I feel as though... Um, so it's not Hasbro making any of these items. I've, I, I, the funny thing is when it comes to, to Hasbro and their collector focus lines, they, they seem to be reluctant to put out anything over about a 60, $70 price tag. And then it jumps up to three, $400 for a Haslab. We don't have that kind of in between thing. Although we do get it on a lot of, um, uh, a lot of other lines, certainly kid focus lines. Um, Renegade Biker 20 foot. No, so I'm, I'm multitasking here. What, what comments did I miss? Um, or are you just asking that, are your comments coming up? I hadn't, I'm scrolling back through. I hadn't seen any before. So it looks like if you're having a problem, it's fixed now. Um, Daniel Torian. Off topic, but I find the Bionic Transport and Repair Station doesn't get the love it deserves. Oh, well, I love that toy, so I have two of them. I've got a, a mint box one with unused stickers and a, and a loose complete one. So, All right. Now that we've looked at... Um, now we've looked at Zartan, let's take a look at the next vehicle that I think that Hasbro should do for the Geo Joe classified line at retail. This is the top of my list. Um, as much as I want the Cobra night landing and I would kind of like the swamp skier. This is the item that is at the top of my list. It makes the perfect foil for the Ram cycle. And that is the Cobra ferret. Let's just adjust the camera here. I would love to see the Cobra Ferret at retail. A quad bike, not overly big, but 
this is a much, much better choice than the trouble bubble, the Cobra flight pod, whatever they call it. A much, much better choice. Um, another reason I would like to see them do this is I would like to buy one and paint it in desert camouflage and give it to Desert Rat, of course. Um, but that would be, um, it would be a terrific item. I noticed when I was, so th this vehicle is not in my um, display case because it is not perfect. You'll see this, um, it has like this, this, this rubber bumper guard on the side here where it says no step. Uh, that's actually missing off that side. And the connector piece. Um, so originally, when you turn these handlebars, it um, pivoted the gun. Um, there's a piece missing from here. I need to sort. I, I need to get myself a nice complete ferret. I also need a Cobra Fang for my collection. Um, <coughs> but yeah, a great toy, which you know I don't believe would cost too much at retail. Jason Anderson, someone stepped on that side. Yes, of course. Um, new ferret needs a sticker on the back seat that says no sitting nuts to parts. <laughs> That's, Desert Rat would have that on his. Um, although there are many people that I would give a ride to nuts to butts. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of my friends. Um Oh George, you don't you don't have to do that, man. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um speaking speaking of the Cobra Fang, um I have a nice complete SAS Hawk and Blades, which is you know the UK recolor of the Fang. And I was very, very pleased when I first acquired it that it had the little yellow cage that goes over the engine like the red cage or red kind of roll bars that go over the engine of the fang um and when i went to move house i picked it up and it just fell apart in my hands i, I need to glue it all back together it's it's broken um the kraken wakes on instagram that does a lot of really cool 3d printed replacement parts for action force i've noticed recently he's been posting photos he is doing yellow and red uh 3d printed cages for your your SAS Hawk helicopters and your Cobra Fangs. So definitely check out the Crack and Wakes um, on Instagram um, if you're looking for some replacement items because those are very, very fragile and they break all the time. Um, all right, the next item that I would like to see Hasbro do at retail, this is a really really silly toy um but one that i think is kind of cool um and that is someone mentioned it in the chat earlier it's the manta the mail away windsurfer toy um with a backpack where you can kind of take all the bits apart put it in the backpack um a dumb toy for sure that's no, I, I don't want to see them do this, but it's the kind of thing that they could do at retail. You know, GI Joe has so many options available um, at different pi price points, at different sizes. Um, my God, this is a stupid toy. Could you imagine windsurfing in a battle? I don't ever want to do that. Okay, the next vehicle that I would like to see them do at retail, I don't think they're going to, but I would like to. Please forgive me, I don't have a G.I. Joe vamp. So instead, we've got the SAS Panther. I mean, I don't know why I'm apologizing for showing you an SAS Panther. What an awesome, awesome toy that is. Um, I'm actually quite liking how this whole camera setup thing's going here. Um, I hope you guys appreciate it. This... Took me ages to work out all the technology. I've got cables and whatnot running all over the place, and um, we're getting there. <coughs> this is 
quintessential G.I. Joe, when you're talking about the green vamp, I need to get one for my collection. I nearly picked one up at Second Chance Toys when I was at the Iconicon meetup, um, but I, I, I spent about four or $500 that day, and I just couldn't justify an extra $125 for a vamp when I that $400 just went on a handful of loose figures. Um, but anyway. Um, this is quintessential G.I. Joe. The vamp is an icon of a real American hero. I believe that they could make this, you know, if, if they don't worry about, you know, light up headlights and I would like to see steering. I know the original didn't have steering. I think in the six inch scale, <clears throat> you should be able to steer the front wheels just for posing options. Um, but I feel that they could do this at a similar price point to what they did the Black Series Snow Speeder. Um, the other cool thing about the vamp, you can put a couple of figures in the vamp and they're not completely hidden inside a, a canopy or behind armor. You can still see your figures. That uh, when, when it comes to, to display for me, um, there's not a lot of point having like an, an armored person. In the Action Man line, now don't give me, I do want this toy. In the Action Man line, they made the Spartan Armored Personnel Carrier, which kind of looks a little bit like the Scorpion tank, but rather than a big turret on the top, it's got a drop down hatch at the back. I can't remember if it was a drop down or opening doors, whatever it was, where you could seat Action Man figures in the back. But as a collector who displays his collection, what's the point in putting three or four nice Action Man figures in the back where you can't see them? So that's why I think vehicles like this, where, you know, it's got a, a relatively open canopy, would be a great choice for the G.I. Joe line. Canuck says, what about the APC? I don't, I can't see them doing the APC at retail. It's, it's too big. We'd be getting more into... Um, what well, they would do Haslab territory. That would be the, the the size of the tool that you have to make to create something like the APC. Um, don't give me. I, I would love to see it, but they're not going to do that at retail. Um, they're not. Jason Anderson said, what if they made a Vamp Mark III and this time around made it a four-door like the Lamborghini? <laughs> yeah. J Jason Anderson, you you actually, um, are you a G.I. Joe collector? Um, you, you seem to know your, your, your G.I. Joe stuff. Um, George Aitken says, it's the easiest vehicle to do for classified and people have been asking for it for years. Yeah, they, they, they have. And you need you need a foil for the his tank, you know, you, something for the his tank to go up against, and the vamp is the ideal choice. Bobby Valor says, "Doing yard work, but wanted to send some love. Also, huge action force vehicle news coming soon." Thank you very much, Bobby. Um, big action force vehicle news coming soon. Um, I don't know all the details, but um, <clears throat> Bobby hinted to me the other the other day. I'm excited to see what he's he's working on. Um, very very excited. <laughs> Jason Anderson, said, because knowing is half the battle. The other half is having a shit ton of money. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear Bobby's vehicle news. All right. Um, the next item that I believe Hasbro could do at retail. Another item that you've all been mentioning. The Ore Striker. Um, this was one of my favorite, favorite toys when I was a kid. I absolutely Loved this thing. It was a fast attack vehicle. Could carry four GI Joes. I, I, th I've got, I've got this gut feeling that the GI Joe classified team 
would more likely go with the um with the ore striker than the vamp if they were going to choose a vehicle um this is what i think they would go with jeff barker says god i love the suspension on this thing yeah and the the former owner of this particular ore striker loved the suspension as well because they don't it doesn't work anymore this one it's been well used well loved um Yes, Michael Schaefer, completely agree. Love that vehicle. Chris, oh, Chris Mewa gave you one. That's very kind of him. Uh, so cool and very real world feeling. Yes, um, very real world. The Oil Striker always made me think of the June buggies they had in the Delta Force movie. Me too. Me too. Um, I love a good Chuck Norris 80s film. Uh, no, George, that is the G.I. Joe version. The Action Force version is not just a sticker change. It's a slightly different shade of green, um, a, a nicer shade of green, I feel. Um, uh, Wolfie762 says, if we rename the Manta to Charlie Don't Surf, do you think it would sell better? Would certainly uh, get me to buy a few, I think. <laughs> So a couple of really, really cool features about the Ore Striker and some features that I think would translate very well to a six-inch scale. Obviously, you've got position for um, a driver and a, a, a co-pilot, a navigator, whatever you want to call it. You can have additional G.I. Joes um, hanging off the side of the vehicle. We've got a heavy weapon on, on the top there, this laser cannon. Um, but something that I loved playing with when I was a kid is the fact that you could remove the hatch over the engine bay and actually, if I can do it, remove the engine. There we go. You can actually pull the engine out. And I, and I loved this when I was a kid that, you know, crankcase could get out and he could work on the engine. And yeah, it's a great little toy. Really, really cool stuff. Kalel48 says, the Ore Striker is awesome, no pun intended. The Whale is another one of my favourite G.I. Joe figures. I'd love to see reintroduced as an even O-ring. A six-inch scaled whale would be the size of a dining room table. Um, and I, I, I often hear people talking about doing a flag in six-inch scale, doing the Whale, doing the Defiant, even something like the Moray Hydrofoil from, from Cobra. Um, and I know when some people say that, they're, they're joking. Um, when other people say it, they're actually being quite serious. And it, 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 it will never happen. Like, as much as you might want it and you might find, you might have a dining room table in your house that you want to display one massive toy on, there aren't enough of us out there with that kind of real estate in our display rooms or collection areas um, that the items just wouldn't sell. Um, anything that can't fit on a shelf is a huge risk for a toy manufacturer. Um, yeah. And, and you would need like an enormous barn to, to put the thing in as well. Um Uh, Wes Robinson says, Analog Toys, what about the Bivouac playset? Funny you should say that, Wes Robinson. I recently acquired the Bivouac playset. Um, I've got it's it's just up here on the top shelf. Um as, as a matter of, let's let's get it out. Let's get it out. And we'll show you the bivouac playset. Because I was thinking about putting that on this list. Now, I, I do have the other, the rest of the parts and pieces. I'm just not going to put it all down off the shelf. Um, this would be a really, really cool little kind of accessory set um, for G.I. Joe Classifieds. And I don't know why, I really don't know why the G.I. Joe team aren't doing accessory sets like the gear packs we get with Valiverse. 
Um, because those things they, they sell like hotcakes. Um, this would be a great addition, as would um uh the Cobra rifle range, I think, would make a great little display piece, give you some extra weaponry and things like that. Um now I know I, I named this stream of vehicles I would like to see at retail. Um that's because calling it vehicles and mini play sets I would like to see at retail was too big of a title. Um but this has prompted me <clears throat> this is something that I would love love to see at retail. It's doable. Um I could see this thing selling for around 50 bucks. And if the G.I. Joe Hasbro team aren't going to do it, Bobby, if you're still listening while doing your yard work, I want to see some kind of variation of this in the Action Force line. Can we get a drum roll, please? Um, who can guess what it is? This would be a terrific item for G.I. Joe Classifieds. It would also be a terrific item for um, for Valorous Action Force. Anything six inch scaled. Um, I love the design of this playset. A combination of a corrugated tin roof, some timber beams, and some sandbags. Um, Outpost Defender. Um, the reason I chose this, I know who just popped up in it. Evander from Paris says. Along with Checkpoint Alpha. Checkpoint Alpha is my favorite mini playset from G.I. Joe. My favorite mini playset of all time. The problem with Checkpoint Alpha is, in a six-inch scale, it's going to be too tall for most people's shelves. Um, that won't stop them from making it. It's going to just stop us from being able to display it. I think you would get it to fit on your standard kind of size display shelf, but you would never be able to put a figure up in the... the um, turret it's not a turret whatever you call it, up, up on the upper level um his head's going to hit you know the shelf above um whereas this is a much more compact shelf size mini play set and this could be from any era this could be from vietnam right through to the modern day um this is a terrific little play set yes michael schaefer and very doable in the six inch scale. Absolutely. Very doable in the six inch scale. Um, Bjorn says, I'm working on making that outpost defender right now. Making it out of what Bjorn? Like 3D printed or. Um, yeah. Michael Schaefer, Crow's Nest Tower. Um well, I didn't want to say Sanger. <laughs> I know that might sound odd to you. That's what we call it in the British military. An, an elevated, sandbagged fire position is a, is a Sanger. Um, I knew no one would know what that meant. So, <laughs> Daniel Dorian says, toys that are both vehicles and play sets just doesn't really work these days. Um, yeah, and I mean, vehicles that are, toys that are both vehicles and play sets, the ones that spring to mind, Millennium Falcon, the Whale and the Moray Hydrofoil. Um, too, too, too big for today's collectors in this scale. Um, Drew G says, heck yeah, I would buy that in a heartbeat. Um, I I just I love this playset. It's a very, very cool playset. It also comes with um another item which I think they should include. Why didn't you get this down before? I don't know. Let's let's put a couple of figures next to this. Kind of show you what it looks like. It also comes with a um with a weapons crate which would be a great little addition. Let's see. Can you see repeater in there? Repeater, I picked him up at Joe Fest this year. Whoops. Apologies. Camera just went off. 
don't know why. This camera stays on permanently when it's plugged into the computer. This one decides to turn itself off. There you go. <clears throat> Just try and picture this in the six inch scale with a bunch of your Action Force figures or your Geo Joe classified figures around it on a display shelf. It would just look awesome. Um, we need something like this. We need it. Um, Jeff Barker says, Vintage Geo Joe always did sandbag sculpts really well. We just need a large starter pack of sandbags. We could stop flooding. <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, Jeremy Jernigan, hello. Thanks for being late as usual. <laughs> Good to see you here, buddy. All right. Um, I'm getting down to... The final few items here. So I'm going to move hit and run out of the way. Let's get the outpost defender out of the way. Now. Let's talk Sergeant Slaughter for a moment. I made a video about the G.I. Joe classified Sergeant Slaughter. Um, not when it was first announced. Um but when they put it up for pre-order and the price was announced. And I've had so many people in the YouTube comments who just do not listen to what I'm saying. Um, that I'm that I'm hating on G.I. Joe and I'm hating on Sergeant Slaughter. I was hating on the price. Okay, I wasn't a fan of, of the buck that they were using. I, I, th I think the figure is cartoonishly big um in real life it would make him seven foot tall and the sarge isn't that tall um all of that aside i don't hate um i don't hate gi joe i'm making this video about it saying all the things that i would like to buy if they did it at retail um but people see any level of criticism as that i'm bashing the whole brand unfortunately they're i've just resigned myself to the fact that you know, a large majority of the people who comment on my videos are morons who just don't listen to what's being said. But all of that aside, if they're going to do, if they're going to do Sergeant Slaughter, well, they are doing Sergeant Slaughter in the G.I. Joe classified line. Here we go. Here's Sarge. Wouldn't it be cool if they did the Triple T? What do you think? Um, I think that would be a very, very cool vehicle to add to the line. Again, I've seen a number of people um, have done 3D printing attempts at this vehicle um, and have done a really, really good job of it. George Aitken, the classified slaughter has ballet dancer legs and Rambo upper body. Yes, I agree. Um, Jeff Barker says the Triple T would be a natural tie-in. Yeah, it, it would be a natural tie-in for GI Joe. This this um, this fantastical military world. Uh, you know, this fits in well with, with the his tank. In real life, the design of this vehicle is dumb. Um, but you know, M M Michael French said it much better in his uh, in his video about Action Force Two, talking about where nostalgia lies. Giorgio Classifieds is doing nostalgia very, very well, but in the modern day, right? Ninjas are stupid. Cobra Trouble Bubbles are stupid. Triple T is kind of stupid. As long as you don't try and put it into that modern military setting, like this is not a vehicle that I could mix with my Valorous Action Force figures, but this would look terrific in the G.I. Joe line. This, I think, would be at the top end size wise of something that Hasbro would sell at retail. They probably won't do it. They're more like, excuse me, more likely to do an All Striker. Um, 
This may even be a cheap Haslab. Who knows? <clears throat> Jason Anderson, excuse me. Jason Anderson says, okay, hear me out. I always wanted the triple T to have a snowplow on the front of it. Um, that makes sense to me because if it had a snowplow on the front of it and then Sergeant Slaughter in his completely open cockpit started to come under enemy fire, he could just lift the plow up in front of him and he's armored and protected. Um, I like that. Um, Neil Hill, you joined the stream late. We've already talked about the swamp skier. Um, now, another toy that I think they could do at retail Daniel Dorian. Serious question Was there a Sergeant Slaughter figure in the LJ and wrestling line? I'm not that familiar with wrestling lines. There was definitely Sergeant Slaughter wrestling figures. Whether it was part of the LJN line or another line, don't know, don't care. Um, yeah, where's Robinson? Um, the Skyhawk, I think, would be a good choice. I don't have a Skyhawk in my collection to show you here, but that would be a that would be a pretty cool choice as well. Uh, Andrew Sanford says, what about Thunder Machine for HasLab, Dreadnoxus Tears? <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of the Thunder Machine. Um, what I would really like to see the G.I. Joe Classified team do is correct a big mistake of the 80s line, and that is to give us, you know, the core group of Dreadnox, like Monkey Wrench, Torch, Ripper, and Buzzer, for example. They're, they're kind of my core four Dreadnox. And just release them with the Punisher motorcycle from Marvel Legends. Give each of them a Harley Davidson motorcycle, because that's how I remember the Dreadnoughts in the comics. They were always riding around a motor. They were a motorcycle gang. Um, I would much rather just get four of those bikes, put all the Dreadnoughts on them, and not worry about a, a Thunder Machine. Um, you know, they never gave us a, a classic motorcycle for the Dreadnoughts in the eighties, and that was a big, big. Um, a big, big mistake, I think, on, on Hasbro's part in the 80s, not giving us um, a generic motorcycle for the for the Dreadnoughts to use. Yes, Jim, Hasbro is fond of motorcycles because, you know, obviously they're not overly big, but also um, the profile of them makes the pack, you know, they can fit it into the packaging quite easily as well. Um All right, another vehicle, I think this is the last one I've got here. Another vehicle that I would like to see them potentially do at retail, because I have a bit of a soft spot for this vehicle. That's the Devilfish. Um, a really cool little vehicle. Now that they're coming out with Shipwreck, I'm not a fan of the hairdo they're doing for Shipwreck. I don't know why he's got, you know, scruffy hair, but anyway... Um, the Devilfish is a really cool little vehicle, and I think they should um, have a crack at doing that at retail. Uh, Laser Pants, thank you for the super chat. It says, just peeking my big head in to see what's going on. Um, yeah, I wish Bobby could make your head smaller. Um, man, as soon as, his, as soon as his channel hit a 1,000 subs, that guy changed. He changed. I <laughs> uh, love you, Ryan. Um, tomorrow night, guys, the 3 POA, 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Me, Bobby, and Ryan, we're all back. And we've decided for tonight's episode of the 3 POA, we are going to be doing nothing but shooting the shit and answering your questions. Um, didn't really want to... We don't want to talk about the Haslab Hiss Tank again. I know I talked about it a bit here on this stream, but it kind of led into the, the topic I wanted to discuss. Um, but yeah, I, I think tonight's going to be a fun show. I've, I've got a few recent pickups I want to show off and stuff like that. So um, definitely, if you're not already subscribed to the 3POA, please head over to the 3POA channel, subscribe and check out the next live stream, which is 8 p.m. tomorrow night. And thank you, Scuba Pete, for putting the link there in the chat. Much appreciated. Um, Where's Robinson says, what about the shark? Um, 
No, again, I don't want to see them do the shark at retail because it's a one man vehicle. Um, and the pilot goes in a cockpit and close the hatch and, and that's it. You're just looking at the shell of a vehicle. Whereas something like the devil fish, you can see the pilot in the seat and you can put additional figures on either side of the, um, the little heavily armored speedboat thingamajig. Um, I'm all about vehicles where you can still see the figures inside. Um, that's what I like to see. Yes, Geek Dragon, a polar battle bear would be great, but we haven't really had many Arctic figures yet. They haven't done snow job yet. Um, who else haven't they done? Well, Frostbite, he came with the snow cat. Um, Blizzard, they haven't done Blizzard yet. Um, so the Polar Battle Bear, I don't know who's going to drive it at this point. Did they announce Snow Job? When did they announce Snow Job? I haven't seen any images. Or was that a pipeline reveal? Um, that would be cool. Jeremy Jernigan, did you mention the dragon heart? Sorry, I meant dragon. <laughs> uh, I didn't mention the dragonfly. I, I I can't see them doing the dragonfly at retail. Um, I think it's just a little bit too big, a for tooling and also for for the for the box size. You put that up to six inch scale, it's going to be it's going to be big. Um, I'm not saying that they can't do it. I just I don't see them doing. Um, I don't see them doing it at retail, but the dragonfly would be cool, especially if they kind of updated it a little bit. Um, you know, Apache gunships. I mean, Jeremy Jernigan, you you know how frequently you see those things flying around Afghan and Iraq, Apache gunships. Um, I would like to see that in the six inch scale, but I don't think they're going to do it. Uh, Neil Hill says he needs a mutton junkyard pipeline reveal. You know who else needs that? Timothy Ward. It's Tim's favorite Joe. And um, the first time I ever met Timothy Ward was at the Iconicon meetup at Second Chance Toys in Marietta, Georgia. And um, it was quite the day for me, you know, because I, I was meeting Melinda Mock as well. And I'd met Michael at, at Joe Fest, but only a couple of days before, meeting Matt Swafford and loads of other fans. Um, and then I'm walking around inside Second Chance Toys and I see that they've got a mint complete mutton junkyard and file card and I, I i grabbed it straight away and I, what i said to the guy was start building me a pile you know i'll come back later and i saw that straight and i went put that in my pile i'm gonna buy that i'm gonna come back later and i, I bought it and as soon as we got back to retro blasting headquarters i just gave it to tim um because i know how much he loves it so um very pleased i was able to do that for my friend um just pure chance that they had that particular figure um for sale on the day it was uh it was supposed to happen um alan parsons thank you he says uh just came across your channel love it born in 66 love my action man soldier and scorpion tank i used to sit on it and use it as transport thank you very much alan um funnily enough you mentioned the scorpion tank i'm um i'm, I'm working to I've, I've, I've i went out and bought a whole heap of toys on ebay yesterday and the day before um for a future video I, I want to make in the next couple of months. Um, the video is not about action man, but the video is going to feature a scorpion tank. Let's see if anyone can figure out what the video might be about. Um, if it's not about action man, but it is going to feature a scorpion tank. Um, All right, guys, um, that's pretty... Oh, I could almost forgot. I've got an unboxing to do. <laughs> I to nearly totally forgot. How am I going to manage this unboxing? I wonder if it'll... I don't think it's going to fit in front of the camera there. The box is pretty big. So I've got a box from Keith Holmesley. Um, arrived just a couple of days ago. So thank you very much, Keith. Um, I need to move some of this stuff out of the way. So 
especially my cup of tea. And let's have a look at what. Oh, and it's heavy too. Let's have a look at what Keith Holmes he sent me. I'm just going to cut his address off the package. I don't want to be giving away his address to people without his permission. Been a while since I've done an unboxing. Okay. Uh, thank you, Articulated Chad. Much appreciated super chat and comments. It's an awesome topic in show, Tony. Thank you very much. Um, Neil Hill, I don't think this is liquor. Um, Analog Toys, what about that underwater sled Cobra used? I think it fit two figs. Uh, I think the eels used it. Um, yeah, I've got one of those. George Aitken sent me one of those. Um, I always remember the TV commercial actually had the Crimson Twins uh, piloting it. So, um, Evander from Paris. Think you might have nailed it there, bro. Doctor Who. Kieran Ball. Robot is the first story of, for Tom Baker's Doctor Who, yeah. And it featured an action man scorpion tank posing as a real tank. Um, yeah, I'm working on a Doctor Who video. So, might have hinted at it at the end of my uh, Thunderbirds video as well. So, uh, Moonlight 47's. So it talks about the Cobra Bunker. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier. The Cobra Bunker with the rifle range would be would be quite cool. Um, oh, Keith didn't want this box coming undone easily. What have we got here? Okay, we've got, wow, let's, um, that's better, um, Geraint Horton, thank you very much for five New Zealand dollars, good to see a Kiwi on the stream, he says, um, are you G.I. Joe and Action Force the same sizing as Australia, New Zealand t-shirts? Got a vendor for work and the US sizing, we need to go up a size. Um, no, I'm, I, I just, I buy XL all the time and it pretty much always fits. Um, uh, Daniel Dorian. Do you still accept fan mail, Tony? Um, I really wanted to pump the brakes on the donations to the channel um, some time ago. I'm certainly not um, soliciting for donations. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I, I say no, and then a person will reach out to me individually, and they really want to send something, and I don't want to let them down. So I say yes. So I, I guess, yes, we are open for... Um, for fan mail, but as I said, I'm not soliciting for donations. Um, yeah, we have a PO box address. Um, I don't want to really put it out publicly. So, um, if someone does really want to send something to the channel, message me privately, um, either on the analog toys, Facebook page or, um, pay or, or probably the best one would be, um, um, the email address, tortured genius films at gmail.com. Um, you don't, need to tell me what you're sending if you want it to be a mystery box but um yeah reach out to us privately so okay we have oh very cool 
We got some um, some wooden pallets. These make great little um, diorama accessories for one six scale. That is cool. Virtually here, so it's like a metal sticky back Punisher logo. It suggests on the back here, is stick it on your toolbox. That's exactly what I'm going to do. This is going to go on my toolbox at work. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, oh, oh, Keith, I love these. So, okay, there's some wooden pallets, but then we've also got like some some fencing panels. These are going to make excellent, excellent diorama pieces for future Action Force videos. Thanks very much, ma'am. And here we have... Whoa. The last of the interceptors. It's the Mad Max car. Can you all see that? The last of the V8 interceptors. That's this is a heavy toy. Man, Keith, thank you very much. This must have cost you a fortune to post this, Keith. This is heavy as hell. I love it. A classic Australian car. Yes, the V8 interceptor. That is very, very nice, Keith. Thank you very much. And in the bottom here, we also have some Punisher decals. Very, very cool. I'm going to find some nice places to put these up. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Well, we've been going for a little bit over an hour. Um, I want to go and get myself some breakfast before my Thunderbirds video premieres at 8 o'clock. Don't forget, there will be um, the 3 POA tomorrow night at 8 p.m. For those of you who are still in the live chat of the Retro Blasting stream towards the end, yes. Oh, hang on. There's one more thing here from Keith. What is this? <laughs> a little pair of shoes. I don't know who these are for. Are these for Action Man, maybe? Might be a tiny bit too small for Action Man. Thanks, Keith. Um, I was losing... Oh, for, for those of you who were still in the live chat towards the end of... Um, the Retro Blasting stream yesterday, I said that War Stories was returning on the 2nd of September. Uh, it is returning on the 2nd of September. And I also said in the stream that we would be covering Platoon because everyone's been asking us to, to get to Vietnam. Um, and I said to Michael, if we're going to do Vietnam, I want to go for the jugular and do Platoon first. So although I announced that, Michael then said... Um, the 4K disc of Platoon comes out the week after the 2nd of September or something like that. Um, and he wants to buy it on 4K and watch it on 4K. So we're still going to do Platoon, but we're going to postpone that to the following show. And I think the next show, we're going to do Waterloo, um, a film that I've never seen personally. Um, I, I picked up a copy of it yesterday. Um, me and Michael are both excited because we haven't seen the film and um, any excuse to watch a film I haven't seen before is a great opportunity. So, um, so three POA tomorrow, war stories, two weeks from today. Um, next weekend, I'm, I've got, I'm taking Gracie away to celebrate our 10th wedding anniversary. Our 10th wedding anniversary was last week. Um, but I was busy at work. So we're heading up to Broome for the weekend. We've got loads of family coming. We're gonna have a big party. It's going to be a great time. Um, I am going to try and get another video done this weekend um that i can post during that time but um lots of things in the pipeline folks and uh look forward to speaking to you all soon 
All right, take care for now, and uh, I'll see you on the um, the free POA tomorrow. Oh, hang on, I missed a super chat. Michael May, thank you. He says a donation for speech therapy, so you can fine tune that fake Australian accent. <laughs> you flame and galah. Um, thanks very much, Mike. Uh, yep, I'm caught up on the super chats. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in and spending some of your Friday evening with me or Saturday morning if you're here in Australia. And uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye for now.